Throughout its war on Gaza, Israel maintained strong support from the United States. Earlier, my colleague Arna Naidu spoke with U.S. Congressman Brad Sherman, and he asked him what his response was to the U.N. investigator's statement that Israel's operation in Gaza appeared to constitute a grave war crime. Well, first, it's odd that uh, there was no comment about Hamas. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces uh, may make mistakes, and when those mistakes are made, they're investigated people may be punished. In contrast, uh, when Hamas uh, carries out its efforts, they give awards and prizes to anyone who's successful in killing an Israeli civilian. And in fact, uh, any Israeli who has come uh, under the control of Hamas has been tortured uh, and killed. Uh, it's interesting to see the UN uh, look at a democratic country that, is, you know, it's very hard to uh, uh, conduct a military operation without people uh, wondering whether you use too much force. But sir, but and, sir the, uh, the United certainly Nations, Israel has. So the United Nations investigator has also cited Hamas for its rocket attacks against Israel, and wants an investigation to include Hamas as well. Well, I don't think you have to investigate Hamas to know that every single rocket fired had as its sole purpose to kill as many Israeli civilians as possible and that the decision to do that was made at the highest levels of Hamas. You contrast that with those who say that Israeli Defense Forces should have taken greater risks, uh, possibly incurred more Israeli casualties in order to take greater steps uh, to assure uh, that civilians uh, were not hurt in Gaza, and you have uh, no uh, reasonable comparison. But now we have reports coming out of Israel. These were interviews granted by Israeli soldiers to Israeli newspapers. I'm sure you're aware of them. In which these Very soldiers well. say that Israeli soldiers actually killed, targeted and killed civilians, including children, and there was wanton destruction of Palestinian property. Well, well the stories that I've read, and I'll put aside the, uh, the property damage, uh, to uh, indicate that soldiers had to decide whether a civilian approaching them, violating uh, the rules, uh, crossing the perimeter, posed a threat or did not, and how much of a risk the soldier should take, how close to let that civilian get. Uh, and in some cases, it appears as if uh, the soldiers could have taken a greater risk, showed more courage, and uh, Perhaps uh, more of them would have been killed because, as you know, uh, Hamas disguises its uh, uh, killers uh, as, uh, as civilians, uh, has women and children carry out terrorist attacks, all for the purpose of making Israeli uh, soldiers much more wary uh, when they see a woman, a child, an old uh, man uh, in Gaza, knowing full well that Hamas, in violation of the rules of law, uh, the, the, the laws of war, uh, uh, is, uh, is using such people to try to kill as many Israelis as possible, military and civilian. So the Geneva Conventions uh, require warring forces to distinguish between military targets and surrounding civilians. And I'm going to read to you what Richard Falk, the UN uh, Special Representative, did say, the one who released this report. He said, if it is not possible to do so, then launching the attacks is inherently unlawful and would constitute a war crime of the greatest magnitude under international law. Then his position is that Israelis must submit to uh, as much death as Hamas wants to impose on them because as long as Hamas uh, uses women and children as terrorists and as long as Hamas hides among a civilian population, there any uh, attempt by Israel to defend its citizens will inevitably involve situations where it cannot distinguish between uh, the military uh, of Hamas uh, and uh, civilians uh, in, uh, in Gaza. So uh, his call is ultimately a call for the death of hundreds of thousands of Israelis or as many as Hamas is able to kill. Well, I don't think he said that, but look, here's what one former chief... Well, that's the implication of what he said. The right. clear and unambiguous implication is Israel is prohibited from trying to defend itself and must accept unlimited civilian casualties unless Israel is able to uh, assure, uh, be certain of who's a civilian and who's military in Gaza where uh, all of the Hamas operatives dress as civilians. So uh, it, it, 
You can say he didn't explicitly cause, call for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of undefended Israeli civilians, but that's the clear implication of uh, the material you just read to me. Well, there is one case where an Israeli sniper shot and killed a mother and her two children, and this is what a former chief of one of Israel's military academies said of this particular incident. He said, if you see a woman and her two children in the crosshairs, it's pretty clear there is almost no case in the world that would justify pulling the trigger. That was from a former Israeli military commander. There are certainly cases where uh, to fail to pull the trigger would mean death for the Israeli soldier because Hamas is perfectly willing to send a woman and her two children with terrorist uh, bombs. And in fact, they have sent children with terrorist bombs. They've carried out pro uh, recruitment campaigns to try to get parents to give them their children so that they could be used as bomb carriers. So in the particular instance, perhaps the Israeli soldier should have showed more courage and allowed uh, and, and taken action to turn that woman around uh, when she was within so many feet. What about the whole issue of proportionality? There were more than 1,400 Palestinians killed in that offensive in Gaza at the beginning of the year, of which 960 were civilians. That's a figure from the United Nations. It's also a figure that was produced by a Palestinian human rights center. Well, obviously Hamas would like Israel to line up 500 soldiers and 10,000 civilians and kill them all in order to achieve Hamas's purpose and to achieve the goal of proportionality. The fact is, that Hamas is trying to kill hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Israelis. Every single action they take is for that purpose. And uh, to say that Hamas is to be uh, accorded uh, some sort of, uh, of merit uh, because their uh, rockets have not been successful in killing as many Israelis as they have sought to kill, uh, that hardly uh, uh, that, I don't, I don't that think hardly that, makes I don't think them that is the issue. I think the issue is Israel's use of overwhelming force in the face of these rockets. You, you just look at the figures. Well, More than 1,400 people killed, Palestinians killed, and 13 Israeli How many, uh, if there was a method for stopping the rockets that would have killed fewer Palestinian civilians? Uh, sir, there was, uh, sir, there was a method for stopping the rockets. There was a ceasefire in place uh, which came into effect in June of last year. Israel broke that ceasefire on November 4th, that was the night of the election, by going into Gaza and killing six Hamas militants. Up to that point, the rocket attacks were 98% fewer than they were before that ceasefire came into effect. So there was well, first a means. Of, first of all, uh, how many uh, rockets is Israel supposed to absorb without making any effort to, uh, to deal with those who shoot them? And if six Hamas operatives are shooting rockets into Israel, trying to kill as many civilians as possible, are you going to say, well, uh, those are good people shooting those rockets because their rockets aren't hitting their targets? No, there was a, uh, I don't there was think a, there was a ceasefire in the place. The ceasefire was violated by all, each and every one of those rockets, and they rained down every day during the ceasefire. Then Hamas renounced the ceasefire. But during the ceasefire, hundreds and hundreds of attempts to kill Israeli civilians and you're saying well it's okay to shoot rockets into Israel as long as you don't hit anybody Congressman Brad Sherman speaking to Anna Naidu. You can read more on that story on our website aljazeera.net forward slash English